as much as I think we all wish that all it took to be successful as an artist was just make great music. I think, I think almost everyone would agree that it would be awesome if that's all it took. But the reality is that great music is simply not enough. Now I know, I know, I know. So many of you are gonna say, it was so much better before all of the social media. It was so much easier. Artists could just focus on making music and everything was perfect and everything was beautiful. And I'm gonna make the opposite argument in this video. And I will be the first to criticize the social media game. I literally just made a video talking about fake music content and how I think it needs to stop. I think it's dishonest. I think it's disingenuous, blah, 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 blah. I've already made a video about that. So I'm not sitting here saying social media is the greatest thing ever and this is awesome and everything is fantastic and you know, this is like the best. There are pros and there are cons, there are ups and there are downs, but for anyone to say that it used to be better is actually out of their mind. If, you, if we spin back in time, if we go back in time a little bit and we think about what it took to be successful as an artist previously, it never has just been great music. Great music has never been enough. It has always been about promotion and marketing. It always has been. The greatest records of all time did not happen by accident. They did not get promoted by accident. It's not like these artists were literally just in the studio making tracks and then made a hit song and then they just literally, you know, put their arms back and relax and then it just boom, all of a sudden they were famous. In fact, in years prior, in decades prior, it was so much harder. It was so much harder. If we go back in time, not that long, it used to be that if you wanted to be a successful artist, you had to have a record label because distribution was impossible without one. We're actually living in a time right now where independent artists have a shot that there never existed before. We're living in a time right now where independent artists actually have a chance. They actually have a shot in a way that literally never existed before. So in the midst of all the garbage, of all the crap, the truth is that we are living in a time where it is easier than ever to get your music heard because of the nature of how simple it is to pull out your phone, make some videos, make some content, and actually potentially have the opportunity of getting your songs heard. Now, I think that there are wrong ways of going about this, and I think that there are good ways of going about this, which again, has always been the case. There have always been the case of good apples and bad apples throughout the entertainment industry, broadly speaking, as a whole. An example of someone that I can think of that is making truly, genuinely creative music today, like actual just art, is Jacob Collier. I think he's a great example of someone who is really breaking all the rules, musically speaking. Yet, he is also playing the content game. He is also putting himself out there. How did he get the stage that he has today in the first place? YouTube. He started making music videos on YouTube and he was extraordinarily good at it. He was making very creative videos altogether. If you go back even to some of his early works, like his music video for his song, In My Room, the video itself is phenomenally creative. Not to mention the music is phenomenally creative as well. But if he would have just put this up as a visualizer, do you think he would have nearly gotten the attention that he got? I highly doubt it. The truth of the matter is that music has almost never existed in isolation. Music is always connected to something, almost always. And even throughout history, licensing, for example, sync licensing, music being used in television and movies and commercials, has been one of the greatest methods of breaking artists throughout the last several, several decades. Many, many artists got their opportunity, their real shot, because their music was placed in something. Look at the song Running Up That Hill, which if I'm not mistaken, was a flop when the song was actually made. Then it's being used in the TV series Stranger Things and then literally is like blowing up. <laughs> it's because of the placement and of how it got connected to an emotion, to a feeling. And other people resonate with that feeling. And as a result, now they want to listen to that song. So music is almost never found or discovered just in the form of an audio file. We're typically always finding and discovering music through other means, whether that's through visual means or whether that's through storytelling. And so it's never actually been about who's making the greatest music, who's the most wizardly musician out there and stuff, right? Who's the most virtuosic artist? Who's the most this, the most that? And not only that, but different audiences resonate with different things. Like I personally don't like country music. So if you make something that's amazing to other country people, 
I'm personally not going to resonate with that. So the stories that are told and the ways in which a country song is going to be pushed in front of an audience and, and the way that they're going to create something to get that song heard is going to be very different than I personally am going to resonate with. Does that make the song bad? No, that just means that I'm not resonating with that. And I think too often people want to see things as very black and white. This is a good song and this is a bad song. Rather than stopping to step back and realize that there's actually an audience for almost everything. There are people interested in almost every genre, which should actually ease your mind a little bit to believe that guess what? If you make music, you have an opportunity. What I personally find concerning is how many people come online, they go onto YouTube, they go onto TikTok, and they complain about the status or the state of the music industry. It's so corrupt, it's so bad, no one has a chance, there's 60,000 songs being uploaded on Spotify every single day, even though no one tells you most of that stuff's garbage anyway, and we'll never, never have a shot, and most songs never get over a thousand streams in the first place, so, you know, the truth is that you're not actually competing against 60,000 songs, you're only competing against those 60,000 songs if your songs are also trash. So, there's that. But people will complain about things rather than stopping to look at the opportunities presented in front of us. We are living in a time, unlike any time in all of history, where just about anybody, regardless of where you live, like literally, you can live on virtually any continent and be successful as an artist if you know how to play the game. But instead people say, why can't it just be about music being great? It's never been about that. Look throughout all of history, it's, it's never been about that. I can promise you that in the 1980s, which people look at as a golden era of music, right? Oh, so much better back then. I promise you that there were artists, there were bands, there were groups, infinitely better than the ones that were actually the ones getting all the recognition at that time. But guess what? They didn't have a record label, right? They had no means of distribution. They had no way of doing it. They, there was no means back then to actually compete against the machine, if you will. Today, you can. Like, like, think about that for a second. Today, you can. Today, you can function as the label. Today, you can function as whatever it is that you wanna function as. You can literally make amazing quality videos without having to go hire a video production team. What I'm trying to get at here is that more often than not, people complain. They talk about how things are broken. They talk about how this isn't fair. This isn't fair. Look, life isn't fair. Like, we need to understand that life isn't fair and it's never going to be fair. So what people do is they focus on this isn't right, this isn't right, this Spotify is not paying enough, right? Well, this isn't right because social media, the algorithm, blah, blah, blah. Like complain, 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 complain. And essentially what you're really doing is you're giving every excuse as to why you are not successful rather than looking at the game and saying, okay, if I'm playing chess, then I need to learn how to play by the rules of chess and I can't be playing by the rules of checkers. This is what artists are doing. What artists are doing is they make music, many, much of which is probably really good music that should be heard, that can be heard, that would be successful. But they look at the game and they say, I don't really like this game. I'm going to play by a different set of rules. And then you play by the rules you want to play by instead of the rules of the actual game. And there's lots of ways of doing this, right? Like there's not only one set of rules. This is the really cool thing about it too. There's a lot of different sets of rules. There are different ways that you can go about it. Like if you don't like a particular thing over here, again, rather than complain about it, why don't you look at what the alternative is and see what else you could do. If you don't want to play the streaming game and you just want to do live shows, great. Go do that. If you want to do streaming and you don't want to do live shows, that's me, by the way. I'm gonna figure out how to play that game. And there's multiple ways of playing that game. You could go down the ads strategy. You could go down the content strategy. You could go down doing both together. And moreover, you can find really cool ways of telling stories around your music. You can also look and analyze what is working on social media and on content. And guess what? You can actually glean, you can learn. If you wanna see what works, you look at the people who are doing what works and you see what can I learn from that? What do I feel comfortable with? What do I feel good with? So I'll give you an example. In my last video, I was talking about how fake music content is a problem. So guess what? When I see that, I say, not for me. I'm not doing that. So instead, I'm looking and I'm focusing on how can I make stories? How can I make content that is going to uphold my value system while at the same time telling a really cool story around my music? And when you start thinking that way, you can start getting creative. You can start get, start actually getting to a point where you can have fun. The, the, the obsession with with People obsess over the complaint that if I want to be an artist, I now also have to make content. Like I have to make content. And I'm gonna tell you something. If your perspective is I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do this, I have to do that. I'm just gonna tell you, good luck. Good luck. I, I can almost guarantee, I can almost promise you 
that you're going to fail. If you have the I have to do X mentality, that you're literally starting by just taking a pitchfork and stabbing it into your foot and then saying, all right, go run a marathon now. Have fun with that. Have fun with that. Instead, here, try this. Ready? See how much of a change this makes. I get to. I get to. I personally feel incredibly thankful that I get to do these things. I don't have to do these things. Like if I want to just go get a job somewhere and do something else, I could go do that. But then guess what? Then I'm going to be saying I have to go to work, right? And I don't really want to say I have to go to work. Uh, I have to make a YouTube video. I have to make a music video. I have to make a lyric video. I have to make TikTok content. I have to make Instagram content. Oh, boo hoo. I have to actually share my music with people. Like, why are we complaining about this? And if, if you're going to be the person who's going to complain about this, then do something else. Go do something else. This is the game. The game never has been just music. The people that are complaining saying, oh, it was so much better before. Y'all don't even understand what it was before. You don't understand how much harder it was before. It was way harder before. You actually had to have a lot of money to be able to have a successful career as an artist. And most artists didn't have that money, so they signed record label contracts, and those record label contracts screwed them over. So then they ended up being in a situation where someone else owned their masters and they didn't. You see where I'm going with this? We live in a more equitable situation than ever right now. Is the competition steep? Yep, always has been. Is the competition less steep than it used to be? Yes. It is less steep than it used to be. I'm personally really tired of, of the way that artists will complain nonstop, nonstop complain. Do you think that that attitude is going to create success? Do you think that if your disposition, your attitude is one of complain, complain, this isn't fair, this isn't fair, this isn't right, does that breed success? And I'm not one of these guys that's like mind over matter, like just believe and you can achieve. I'm not one of those guys, but I do think that if in your mind you have polluted yourself, you have poisoned yourself with this attitude and mentality of it's not fair, it's just not fair, it's not fair, you'll never be successful and you will live the rest of your life believing it's just not fair. But you never actually tried by learning how to play the game. The game's not easy. The game is hard. <laughs> like I of all people understand how hard it is. Everyone would love to look at my YouTube channel like, oh my gosh, must be nice. 200 something thousand subscribers. Y'all know that it took me four years to get to a thousand subscribers? Did, did you know that? It took four years to crack a thousand subscribers. I get it. I understand how hard it is. I'm starting over in a lot of ways with my own artist projects. Like I literally just released a brand new artist project not even two weeks ago. And I have like 40 followers on TikTok. That kind of sucks. I'm not a big fan of how that feels when I know I have over 200,000 subscribers on this channel. But you know what I'm choosing? I am choosing to play the game. And games, ready for this? Games are fun. Aren't games fun? Like, do you like playing games? Because who doesn't like to play games? Many of you probably can spend hours looking at a TV screen playing games. Well, why not play a game in real life then? Why not view it like a game? Because you can clearly do it. You can lose over and 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 over again on the video game. But then when you lose in real life, even one time, the single, single point of adversity. Oh my gosh, the video only got 100 views. I quit. Or I feel boohoo. What was me? It's like... Yeah, you've made like 10 videos. <laughs> like my, my new project that I have, it's called Lithos. I just started it like two weeks ago. And guess what? I have videos that have 100 views. I have a video with 1,200 views. Am I sitting in here like boo-hoo, what was me? Uh, I did for a period of time. And then guess what I got to do? Stop it. What are you doing? You just started. What are you doing? Make 100 videos first and then you can analyze it. What are you doing? I believe that my music is pretty good. Like my solo project, I literally released the first album, the first thing I ever did in September of last year. We're over 200,000 streams on Spotify with that, with that stuff, with, with my music there. I just released a song not even a month ago. It has over 10,000 streams. I'm doing okay. This is a game. Do I want to do better than that? Yeah. Would I love to have a million streams in a month? Yeah. Will that happen someday? Maybe. I don't know. But you know what? I'm choosing to look at it like a game. Play it like a game. 
If you're playing a game, Mark Rober has a wonderful, wonderful analogy. If you're playing Mario Kart and you fall down, or not Mario Kart, if you're playing Mario and you fall down a little crack and die, it's not like you throw the controller away saying, oh my gosh, <laughs> I died, I don't wanna play this game anymore. No, you do the level again and you remember, okay, when I get to that point, I gotta make sure I actually jump over <laughs> that thing so I don't fall down the crack and die. But when it comes to real life, our emotions get in the way. When it comes to real life, when it comes to our music, we get hyper, hyper emotional. If you wanna have success as an artist, it's one part, I don't give a crap. And it's another part, I give a lot of craps. And you have to have these at the same time. And it feels like a paradox. It's hard, it's really hard. You have to care and not care at the same time. You have to care when you make something. And then when you put it out there, you have to put your hands out and you say, it is what it is. And then you do it again. And then you do it again, and you do it again. And every time you do it, you look out, where's the crack? Where did I fall last time? How do I fix it this time? Stop, stop seeing yourself in a negative light. Stop seeing the game in a negative light. Are there things wrong? Yeah, there are things wrong. Should Spotify pay more? Sure. But do I also have friends that are literally making full-time incomes from streaming? Yes. So am I gonna look at the people who are complaining over here who say, oh, but Spotify's not paying enough. And then you pollute your mind by saying, yeah, you're right. Spotify's not paying enough, that's not fair. And now you're dumping all of your energy into that rather than looking at the people over here. It's like, okay, I have a friend here who's making literally almost a million dollars a year in streaming. I wanna talk to him. What's he doing that I'm not doing? That's the game I'm playing, folks. I would not be going all in as an artist if I didn't think there was opportunity. If I thought it was literally just like, oh, boo-hoo, nothing's ever gonna happen, I wouldn't be doing it. But here I am going all in. I'm going all in on my artist projects because I confidently believe that in three to five years, those artist projects will surpass anything I've done. And I believe that. You wanna know why I believe that's gonna happen? Because I am choosing to look at the rules of the game and play by them instead of complaining about them. It's never been about who's the greatest artist. It's never been about who's the greatest musician. It's been about who can learn how to play the game. Some of you might hate that, and I know I'm gonna get comments about this. You know, well, I agree with your last video about the fake music content, but this one, I'm not so sure. I am not one of those guys who says content's evil. I literally built my entire career on content. I've seen the benefit of building a career on content. I just think you need to do it the right way. Content's not bad. Content's awesome. I get to share my story. I get to share my music. I get to. And you get to. It's time to flip-flop how you think. Stop putting yourself in the dump and stop polluting and poisoning your mind by listening to the people that complain. Because the people who complain, they're not the ones who are winning anyway. So why on earth are you listening to them?